Chris, how come I have to spend all my time in here cleaning up while you fellas swim and have fun? So does every cub when it's his turn. You're the keeper of the den, aren't you? You're the inner guard, aren't you? Well, you know the rules. Saturday, too. Working at what? Messing around with a lot of old ladies, sick cats, and chickens. Bet you couldn't have sold up old Prince's leg like he did. Yeah, well, who wants to be a horse doctor? Come on, we gotta hurry. Let's go. Come on. I don't wanna be late. Hey, come on, Tubby. Gosh, I wish I could quit school like you. You're sure lucky. <laughs> don't worry, Tubby. I'll be back soon. Hope. <laughs> A crack up on your first solo, huh? Ah, uh, you're okay, young fella. Yes, sir. <sighs> well, we better get you right back to flight headquarters. Fella, don't try to take off, you get a little more rudder. Hey, Don, Dr. David. Somebody call me? Yeah, me, Chris, up here. <laughs> well, hello, Tarzan. <laughs> well, what's the idea of popping out of trees and waking a fella up? I was having such a swell dream, too. Just had a 20-pound trout on my line. That's a good thing I woke you then. He might have taken pole and all. <laughs> well, I'll forgive you if you'll come along and talk your mother out of a cup of her coffee. And the doctor's profession is, is not like any other. There's certain ethics that you've got to observe. Now, you must remember that, Chris. It's very important. Well, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm saving myself a walk. And the Countess has taken to straying on me lately. Well, didn't you leave me stranded at old Mrs. Peabody's yesterday? Yes, and the day before, too. Well, okay. But you better watch out or I'll be forced to mechanize. Why, well, you wouldn't trade the Countess for a Rolls Royce. No. But if ever I get a patient that starts paying me in gasoline instead of hay, she'd better look out. Well, that reminds me, I've got a patient for you. Yeah, here we are. Got a foot caught in one of Tolliver's weasel traps. Ed was all for putting him out of the way. But the kids insisted that you could fix him up. Ooh. Ooh, legs broken, huh, Doc? Yeah, the kids seem to think so. 
Well, didn't you even look at it yourself? Certainly not. I'm an ethical practitioner. I never butt in on the other fellow's cases. Oh, <laughs> well, this calls for some sort of a consultation. Come on. How's the little kitty getting along, Chris? Well, swell. I gave her a discharge yesterday. Good. Chris, what are you doing home? Oh, hi, Mom. I found a poor man who needs a cup of coffee. Oh, I'll make some right away. Where is he? Gee, thanks, lady. And how about a hunk of that apple pie I smell it? <laughs> <laughs> David Elliot. I might have known. And what's more, that pie you smell is for dinner tonight. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait then. Until you ask. I'll ask you, Doc. Come on, we got a patient waiting. Oh, uh, and the coffee's ready, will you? All right, it? son. I hope you don't have to have an amputation there. Well, oh, I think it'll be okay. It's all right for me. Well, that's Molly and her little kittens, huh? That's right. <laughs> Who's this fellow over here? Well, that's Sandy. He broke his leg. He's getting along fine now. Yeah. And this is Toby. The dog was in that fight, isn't it? Yeah, that's him. His deer was darn near chewed off. Best pup I ever saw when he saw him up without a whimper. Okay, fella, we'll have a look here and see what's what. Ooh. I'll say it's broken right at the joint. You know, if that was your arm, I'd put it in the cast. What, with all that swelling? Oh, you thought I'd forgotten, huh? <laughs> Here, hang on him while I fix this. Yeah, here. easy now, baby. Here, I've got him. Here, here, uh, here. He's, he's all right. Here, right. You're getting pretty expert, you know. I'll have to take you along with me on my fracture cases. School's over. By the way, what are you doing home today? Got a job. I'll be delivering your groceries from now on. You mean you've quit school? Well, for a while. Vacation's only a month away. Well, you think I'm getting the Spanish too tight, Doc? Now, look here, Chris. You're going to need all your credits if you're going to take college exams in September. Looks like I'll have to forget about that for a while. You see, the job's more important right now. Besides, I can easily make up for lost time once I do get started. Yes, yes, sure you can. And you and I will do a lot of good stiff work this summer, huh? Oh, Gee, Doc, that'll be swell. Wanted in kitchen. Be right with you, Mom. She's awful upset about this, Doc, so he says anything. Well, you tell her you think it's a good idea. But I've been studying too hard, maybe, or... Well, you know what I mean. I have a general idea. <laughs> Swell, you better go in and get your coffee. I'll feed this fellow and put him to bed, and I'll be right with you. Okay, sir. Oh, he's going out. Let's eat this up. Yeah. Must be some kinfolk to Doc, huh? That's right. Must be aiming to stay in Oakdale quite a spell with all that baggage. Perhaps. Think you like it as well as California? Maybe. Guess you know Doc's divorced wife is out there with her young'un. Why the matter? They say she's rich and good looking. But you can't have a lick of sense. Well, what makes you think that? Of course, a woman would have to be a fool to divorce a man like Doc. <laughs> but I reckon I don't have to tell one of his own kinfolk how fine he is. But what I can't understand is him not saying a word about you coming. Ain't like him. You don't suppose he didn't receive my airmail letter? Airmail letter? Confound my pictures. Is that it? Oh, yes. Why have you got it? It came on the 12-5 yesterday, and I put it in a pocket so to be sure to give it a doc, and plum forgot it. Come on, Elmer. There's his buggy sitting in front of Harper's. Get up there. <laughs> Guess I'll just run in and tell Doc his visitors come. Oh, please don't bother. He's probably calling on a patient. Shucks. The Harpers ain't patients. Young Chris is a sort of a protege of Doc's. He's helping him to be a doctor. And Julie, that's Chris's mom. Well, just between you and me, Doc sets a heap of store by her. And there's a woman that'll make him the right kind of wife. Maybe I better just run in and kind of prepare him. Wait a minute. Why doesn't he marry her? Guess she can't afford it. He's too darn soft-hearted to collect a bill. Sounds to me as if my father needs a business manager. 
He sure does. Huh? Your father? Yes, I'm the young one you spoke of. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Ain't carrying no insurance. You know, Chris, one time I was fishing up at Goose Creek, and the fish were so thick that we had to hide behind a tree to keep them from stealing our bait. <laughs> no fooling. It's okay, Mom. I'll get it. Oh, it's probably Miss Emma, dear. Tell her I'll be right in. Come on in, Miss Emma. Oh. Is Dr. Elliot here? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, I'll call him. Oh, gee, excuse me. Won't you come in? No, thanks. I'll wait here. Just give him this letter. Well, you can't do that. Oh, stand out there, I mean. Now, won't you sit down and come in? I mean, uh, won't you come in and sit down? All right, thanks. It's very nice of you. It's all right. I'll give this to Doc. Oh, Mom, you ought to see her. See who? The girl out there. What girl? The one that's waiting for Doc. For me? And she said to give you this. Nothing wrong, I hope, David. What is it, Doc? Who is she? Who is she? Why, it's Betty, of course. Here, read that. Hello, Doc. Of course, I'm dreaming. But it's the nicest dream I ever had. Oh, gosh, youngster. You don't know how good it is to have you here. And I know how good it is to be here. Look here, young woman. Are you sure you're Betty Elliot? Well, you ought to know. Yes, but the last time I saw Betty Elliot, she was a freckle-faced, leggy brat. Not a glamour girl that bowls young men over at first glance. <laughs> well, I outgrew the freckles and grew to the legs. And you're no young man. A most uncalled for remark. But I was referring to the young man who let you in. Oh, yes, your protege, Chris Harper, who's going to be a doctor. Well, you seem to have acquired a lot of information in a very short time. <laughs> the only thing I don't know about you is what you do with your old razor blades. That's easy. I use them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee. Gee, I'm glad I came. I second that motion, honey. Oh, you and I are going to have one grand summer. I hope you like to fish. Well, I don't know. I've never tried it. Well, Chris and I will initiate you. And we'll teach you to cook them, too, right out in the open. And, oh, say, I forgot you two haven't met officially yet, have you? He and his mother will think I'm keeping you a secret. Wait a minute. Oh, Chris, Julie, come here. Call me, Doc? Yes, Chris. I want you to meet my daughter, Betty. Hello, Betty. Hello, Chris. I'm glad to meet you again. Yeah, I guess we did sort of meet before. <laughs> yeah, and Betty, this is Chris's mother. I'm awfully glad to know you, Mrs. Harper. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Betty. Dave, you're a mighty lucky man to have such a lovely daughter. Well, frankly, I'm a little disappointed in her. She doesn't know anything about fishing. <sighs> well, that's nothing. Lots of girls don't. Don't you bother, Betty. You'll soon learn if you're around these two. They only know two subjects, fishing and medicine. <laughs> yes, and if I don't get back to my pills and powders, my patients will find out they can do without them. Come on, honey. Come over soon again, dear. You're always welcome. How about tonight? I can show you the hospital. No, no, nothing doing, young man. She's spending the evening with her father. Come on. Goodbye. 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 The doc's sort of keen on her, isn't he? Uh-huh. I wouldn't exactly say he was alone in that opinion, would you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> say, what have you done to this place? Looks like it had its face lifted. You just missed the dust, that's all. Don't kid me, you move things around. Looks better, doesn't it? Sure, a hundred percent. What's Come on. It? Oh, <laughs> say, this is the life of Riley. Yeah. 
I had no idea a daughter could be such a comfortable commodity. Whatever that is. <laughs> well, it's been a long time since anybody did that for me. You know, your mother used to... Yeah, funny. You know, she had the same knack of making a place look attractive, no matter how ugly it was. I remember one dreadful cracker box we lived in when I was first trying to start a practice. And the whole place was a dingy, tired shade of brown, except the rug. That was blue, violently broken out with huge red and green roses. Oh, it sounds hopeless. Mm -hmm, not for her. I came home one night and thought I'd walked into the wrong place. Whatever had she done to it? Well, she got rid of the roses by turning the rug over on its face. And with a little paint and dress material, she worked magic on the furniture. Of course, we couldn't sit on anything for days, and the smell almost suffocated us. But we didn't care. We liked it. Doc? Yeah? What happens to people? I mean, like you and Mother. How do you mean, dear? Well, you and she were in love and happy then, weren't you? Sure, very. Well, that's what I mean. How can all that change? Do people just suddenly stop loving each other and not want to be together anymore? No. No, it only seems like that because they haven't realized it's been happening gradually. You see, honey, the marriage is a funny setup. It's sort of like a young plant. You give it any kind of a break, and it'll grow up strong and sturdy and stand up under any kind of weather. But if you forget to water it, and let a lot of weeds get in and choke it, well, first thing you know, it's too far gone to save. Well, what sort of weeds, Doc? Things like jealousy and, and selfishness? Yes, or pride. Outside interests, too much money. Pride was your weed, and Mother's was her money? Oh, she wasn't a blue. She couldn't help inheriting the money, and it wasn't her fault that I couldn't get used to the new scheme of things. I did try, but it just didn't work out somehow. I was unhappy, and I was making your mother unhappy. So I just pulled up stakes and finally landed here in Oakdale. Here I am with a lovely daughter to look at and not a care in the world. And not a patient who's paid up. What do you know about that? Everything. I went through your books today. Look here, young lady. A doctor's affairs are supposed to be inviolate. And your affairs are in the red. And we're going to get you out of it and on a paying basis. Uh, Never mind. I'll answer it. Uh, You're not going out in any more calls tonight. Hello? Yes. I'm sorry, but the doctor's busy. I'll take the message. Oh, I'm afraid not, Mr. Boggs. He was out in the case all last night, and he must have some rest. Here, here, you're running no, my you practice. don't. Give me that. No, you don't. Give me that. All right. Hello. Hello, Boggs. This is Doc. Yes. Oh, the missus having trouble again, huh? Well, that's too bad. Well, you keep her nice and warm, and I'll be right out. What? Oh, forget it. Tell her she can make some more of those preserves and give them to me as soon as she's well. Yeah. A night call and you get a jar of jam. What am I going to do with you? You stop worrying so much about my affairs. I gotta go out and wake the countess up. delivery out at Barker's farm. Want to come along? Sure. What were you doing? My collections for the week. Well, how are you doing? Okay, look. A $2 down payment on the Tolliver's baby. <laughs> They'll own her by Christmas. And a dollar on Polly Brown's tonsils. 
And the Masons are going to pay 50 cents a week on their measles. <laughs> <laughs> say, at that rate, Doc will soon be able to retire. I'll say he will. Come on. Okay. See it over there? That's our swimming hole. Oh, Kane. And right under those trees there, that's a lion's den. We got it all fixed up swell. It's too bad you can't see it. Well, why can't I? Uh-uh. Only for lions and cubs. You see, it's a secret organization. Oh. Well, I don't tell secrets, Chris. Honest, I don't. And anyhow, just letting me see it wouldn't give anything away. Besides, it isn't as if I lived in Oakdale. Oh, please, Chris. Come on. Well, where did you get the jail door? Say, that's off a real cage from a circus. Hey, uh, turn around a minute, will you? And shut your eyes and don't look. It's okay now. Well, what was all that for? Uh, only the officers know where the keys hit. See, the members have to use a signal and password. Got it off a circus poster. So this is where they get thrown to the lions. Bring in the subjects and let them meet their fate. Hey, watch it. I suppose you just sit here and give orders. Yeah, and I got one waiting to be delivered right now. Come on. Oh, do we have to go? I like it here. Look, if the fellas knew I had you here with me, then it'd be murder. <laughs> Keep your back turned a minute, will you? How deep is it, Chris? About six feet in the middle. For two cents, I jump right in. Dare me? Well, I am not. You're not going to go jumping in. Come on, we got to go. Oh, look, Chris. You go on to Barker's with your delivery and pick me up on the way back. What for? Well, what do you mean, what for? I'd just like to stay here and enjoy it for a while. The lions surely won't mind that, will they? Well, I guess not, but I'll only be gone 15 minutes. What's the matter? Afraid I'll run off with the place? <sighs> no. Oh, go on. Toot your horn, I'll be on the road waiting for you. Okay. Seems awful silly.
What's wrong? Where are you? Here. What are you doing over there? We're waiting for you to come to get me some clothes. What happened to your clothes? Oh, that little kid, Jimmy, took them. Well, Jimmy Brown? Which way did he go? Oh, don't bother about him. Do something about me. Well, you cheated. When I hid the key, I should have known better to bring you along. Oh, I'm awful sorry, Chris. I'll try and get you something to wear. Here, put these on. Well, you go and wait for me at the truck. <laughs> oh. oh, gee, Chris, I can't go home like this. You'll have to, till we get to my house anyway. Hurry up before somebody comes along. Oh, but everybody will see me. That serves you right. It's your own idea. Oh, I suppose I stole my own clothes. Gee, Chris, don't be mean. I feel bad enough. Okay. Boy, are you a sight. Look at those shoes. Yeah, that's right. Laugh. Come on, we better get going. It, Miss Carey. Do you want the zippers or hooks and eyes? No zippers. Took the whole family to get me on the last one. <laughs> then it'll be hooks and eyes. Yeah. Boy, wait till Mom sees you. Oh, cut it out. Well, Mom? Yes? Will you come here a minute, please? What's the matter? <laughs> Why, Betty! <laughs> She went swimming and somebody stole her clothes. Please don't laugh, Mrs. Harper. Chris has been kidding me all the way home, and I can't take it much longer. Oh, poor Betty. Never mind. You come with me and we'll get you something to wear. Shame on you, Chris. She'll be ready in a few minutes, Chris. And don't you tease her any more about it, you hear? What do you think the fellow's gonna do to me when they find out? Well, your shoulders are broad, and don't talk with your mouth full. Here, pick one. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't trust you, Chris Arbor. Well, you'll be awful sorry. You better choose. Okay, I'll pick this one. Boy, can you pick them? It's my first week's wages, Mom. Oh, darling. An extra buck I get to keep for a little mechanical surgery on the delivery truck. Why, oh, that's wonderful. You know, you're being an awfully good sport about all this, Chris. And I know what it meant to you to give up school, too. Oh, I'm having a great time, Mom. No fool, and I really am. Oh. <laughs> hey, Slowpoke. I'm all ready. Quit yelling. Well, it fits, huh? Thanks a lot, Mrs. Harper. Come on, I'm in a hurry. See you later, Mom. All right. Goodbye. Jimmy Brown, you've been found guilty of violating the sanctum sanctorium of our secret order, where only lions may enter. Have you anything further to say before sentence is pronounced upon you? You let a girl into your secret sanctum sanctum, and she ain't no lion. I have told the brothers of my guilt they will punish me also as they may see fit. Have you anything further to say? No. hereby sentenced to the trial by water, if the consul agrees. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Take him away. What are you going to 
do to me? You heard the sentence. You're gonna get the trial by water. Are you gonna make me a lion? No, we told you you're too little. Now look, fellas, as head lion, I have any more rights than anybody else. So when we finish with Jimmy here, why well, you three will have to decide my penalty. You got anything to say before we execute sentence? Yeah. Can I ever be a lion? Silence. I hope this will teach you a lesson. When we say stay away from here, we mean stay away till you're big enough. We can't do that to Chris. Oh, let's forget about it. We wouldn't like that, fellas. But we could think of something easy. I know. We'll sentence him to something for 30 days and then suspend it. Like the judge did to Pa last week. Swell. Hey, Smokey. Hey, Tubby. Men, we're about to execute the supreme penalty. All right, lay down. Smoke, grab his hands and feet. One. Two. Three. <laughs> Wait a minute, fellas. He didn't come up. Oh, he's clowning. No, look, something's the matter. Hey, I don't like this. Is he dead? Nobody's hurt. His head's bleeding, Chris. He must have hit it on a rock. Jimmy, Jimmy boy, come on, you're all right. Jimmy. Maybe a concussion. I better get him to dock right away. What about his mother, Chris? Somebody should tell her. You and Smokey go quick. Try not to scare her. OK. so long. Why is everything so still in there? Maybe he's dead. Oh, I'm going in. I can't stand it another minute. No, Mary, please. Please, dear. You'd better go home, Pete. I'll let you know the minute there's any change. All right, Betty. Do as the doctor asks. You know he's doing everything he possibly can. Doc, if he dies, I killed him. I killed him. Do you understand, Doc? Don't let him die, Doc. Please. Steady, fella, steady. All we can do is wait and pray. He's not losing any ground anyway, Chris. Why don't you go out and get a little fresh air? Go ahead, I'll call you. Oh, how is he? It's just the same. <laughs> Beat home. He didn't want to leave, but I promised I'd let him know. Let him know what, Betty? That's what I'm scared to think of. Don't talk like that, Chris. You mustn't. He just lies there. So white and so still. He's such a gay little guy, too. Why, why the last thing he said was, when can I be a cub? No. Maybe. Never would have happened if I hadn't butted in where I didn't belong. You're not to blame, Betty. Nobody is. Nobody but me. I can only do something to help. Doc won't let you down. I know he won't, Chris.
You've had a nice sleep. Oh, Doc. What happened? Oh, I think you hit your head on a rock in the swimming pool. Oh, I remember. The lions trialed by water. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jimmy. You're gonna be swell now, fella. Uh, sorry about the psychum psychum. Oh, forget it. Say, you know what? You were like a lion last night. A lion? Gee, a lion. Sure, you're gonna be a lion, but you gotta get some sleep now. Go ahead, Chris, tell the folks he's gonna be all right. Now, shut your eyes, son, you're gonna get a nice sleep. That's the boy. There you are, Mr. Park. $14.50. At this rate, I'll have the mortgage greatly reduced, but it has to be renewed. That's fine, Julie. <laughs> you know, you deserve a lot of credit for the way you've managed to keep your head above water. Hmm. Right now, I wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for Chris helping out. Though it just about broke my heart to have him quit school. I know. When a boy is smart and got the ambition that Chris has, it's too bad to have to slow him up. Getting to be a doctor is a long, hard pull at the best. I know it is. By the way, Julie, a fellow came in the bank yesterday asking about you and Chris. Who? Oh, his name is... Handsome fella, tall, little mustache, round 40, I reckon. Here it is. Name's William Baker, Baker and Townsend, attorneys. Suite 204 Miller Building. Know him? William Baker. No, the name doesn't mean anything. Well, he, he must know you, and you must have met him sometime, the way he talked. Well, what did he say? Oh, seemed uh, interested in you, what you'd been doing. Want to know if you're still a widow, and what kind of a boy Chris had grown up to be. Seemed mighty interested, and Chris wanted to be a doctor. Strange, I can't imagine who it could be. There was an old bull, Julie. No, <laughs> not much chance of that. <laughs> did he say why he was in Oakdale? No, just drove down from the city on business for a client. Well. It's beyond me, Mr. Barnes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Oh, it's all right, Julie. You're Glad not. to see you any time. Hello, Oakdale Grocery. Oh, yes, Mrs. Bascom, there's a special on today, two for a quarter. Are you sure that's all you want? Okay, I'll deliver them as soon as I can leave the store. I'll be right with you, sir. Yes, Mrs. Bascom. You don't? Okay, well, I'll bring a small size instead. No, I'm still here, Mrs. Bascom. Well, of course you save money on the big size. Okay, goodbye. Sorry to have kept you waiting, sir. That's all right. That's Mrs. Bascom again. Hello. Yes, Mrs. Bascom. Well, I'll bring out both sizes, and you can decide then. All right. Goodbye. Mrs. Bascom is evidently a lady of rare indecision. Yeah, she's rare, all right. That's the fourth time in the last 15 minutes she's changed her mind. Well, I hope I never get her on a jury. Well, you're a lawyer, huh? There's still an occasional difference of opinion about that. Oh, you mean when you lose a case? How do you know so much about law? I thought your interest was in medicine. Well, what's the difference whether the case be legal or physical? You're in wrong if you lose it. <laughs> Put it there, Dr. Harper. Say, uh, how come you know so much about me? Well, I should. One of your patients tried to take a bite out of me yesterday. Uh, Toby, I think his name was. Oh, uh, sort of a bulldog with one bad ear? Mm. Yeah, that's the fellow. His, uh, his owner excused his lack of civic hospitality on the grounds that Toby was still convalescing from a serious operation. <laughs> Say, I'm sort of proud of that ear. Did you get a good look at it? Mm, no, uh, to be frank, I rather kept my distance after our first encounter, but uh, I, uh, I did get a stitch-by-stitch -stitch description of the operation. Oh, poor Jimmy. 
He held Toby all through it and then keeled over. And then I had him on my hands. <laughs> well, you've certainly been getting a lot of practice. All I can, because it'll mean some time-saving shortcuts when I get to college, and that's important. When do you start? Well, uh, I don't know just yet. Depends on how soon I finish Oakdale High. Oh, then you're, you're still going to school. Well, up until last week I was. Then this job came along and, well, I sort of figured the experience would be good and... Say, here I am talking the ear off a customer instead of waiting on him. What do you have? <laughs> Got any uh, pipe tobacco? Sure, if you're not fussy. Farmer's special. Well, Ten I'll cents. Try anything once. A quarter, that's Mrs. Bascom. Oakdale Grocery. Oh, hello, Betty. <laughs> you were. just won me a quarter. Yeah, the customer lost a bet. Say, uh, Mom wants to know if uh, you and Doc will come over for dinner tonight. You will? Swell. Okay, shoot. Quarter milk. If they aren't any use in the body, then, then why have we got them? Well, we won't have eventually. You see, Chris, when man started to walk upright, things that were vital on all fours no longer had any purpose. And a lot of new needs developed. Now, for instance, you take the vertebrae. Yes, and take the vertebrae and the doctor right outside while I still have my tablecloth. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm sorry, Julie. Okay, Mom. Oh, no, you don't, Chris Hopper. We're doing the dishes. And you and Doc are going outside. Best offer I've had tonight. <laughs> Come on, Julie. <clears throat> but listen, Betty, I got some important work to do in the I hospital. I know, Doctor. But you've got a major operation on some dishes first. So get busy. I hate to do dishes. Go ahead and smoke it if you like. I don't mind. No, I do. The night smells too good. <laughs> I was just thinking of the expression on Chris's face when that daughter of mine delivered her ultimatum just now. <laughs> <laughs> Dishwashing's a pet aversion of his. <laughs> yes, well, she'll cure him of it. She's even got me liking prunes. <laughs> you know, it was really Doc's idea. Am I going in for medicine? How come? Well, I took a pup into his office one day that had been run over. He let me help fix the poor little fella up. Well, I got so interested, he gave me a couple of books. From then on, I just naturally couldn't see any other profession. Yeah, it's going to be pretty tough to give her up when the summer's over. Oh, I know it is, David. But why must you let her go? She's perfectly happy here. Oh, for the moment, yes. It's new and different from anything she's ever known. But how long will it last? She'll soon begin to miss all the things that she's used to with her mother. Smart schools, travel, luxurious surroundings. What can I give her to make up for all that? All those things didn't make you happy. Well, I just happen to have funny ideas. And she just happens to be very much her father's daughter. He says you're going to be a great doctor someday. I only hope I'm half as good a one as he is. Why he stays in a little town like Oakdale, I can't figure out. You must be pretty dumb, then. What do you mean? Doc's in love, that's what I mean. Gosh, honest, who with? Are you kidding? Well, of course not. I haven't any idea. Until you came, why, he spent most of his time with me and Mom. Well, it isn't you. Gosh, you mean, you mean Mom's the one he... Of course, stupid. And what's more, she's plenty keen about him. Well, how do you know? A little bird told me. A fine doctor you'll make if you can't recognize symptoms as plain as theirs. What kind of symptoms? Just watch them when they're together. Yes, but Julie, she's too young to know what she really wants out of life. She's got to have her chance to find out. What kind of a father would I be if I deprived her of that chance? Yes, you're right, David. Of course, I'd feel the same way about Chris. Now, that was not the right answer. Doggone women anyway. Just when you really want them to put up an argument, they agree with you. <laughs> That's what I like about men. They're always so consistent. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Betty, I, uh, I was just thinking, if they do get married, wouldn't that make you my sister? Well, not exactly. Just a stepsister. Why? Nothing. I was, I was just wondering. Uh, come on and help me change some bandages, will you? Well, just I hate to deprive you of my fascinating society, I've got some calls to make. I guess Chris won't object to walking my young lady home. I hardly think so. Good night. Good night, David. Oh, 
gentleman, who that can be. Well, now, why didn't you tell me you were expecting visitors? I'd have made myself scarce earlier. Don't talk nonsense, David. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Harper? Yes? My name is Baker, William Baker. I hope you'll pardon my barging in on you like this without an appointment, but uh, you see, I, I find I must leave town the first thing in the morning, and if you could spare me just a few moments, why, I... Uh... Oh, of course, Mr. Baker. This is Dr. Elliot. How do you do? How do you do? I... I really feel awfully guilty intruding in this way, but... Not at all. I was just leaving anyway. Good night, Julie. Good night, Dad. See you tomorrow. Good night, sir. Glad to have met you. Good night. Please come in, won't you? I think it'll be a bit more comfortable inside. Thank you. Sit down, please. Thank you. Forgive me, Mrs. Harper. I, I didn't mean to stare, but uh, you're so completely different from what I expected. Expected? I don't think I understand. And I'm also puzzled, Mr. Baker, about the personal inquiries you made about us at the bank yesterday. I'm not surprised. Perhaps when I tell you that I'm John Harper's attorney and acting on his instructions, you'll understand better. What possible interest could he have in and me and my son. Well, aren't you overlooking the fact that uh, your son is also Mr. Harper's grandson and uh, only heir? Well, he overlooked that fact ever since Chris was born. So wh why should I give it any consideration now? Well, only for the boy's sake and what it could mean to his future. Oh, that's already planned, Mr. Baker. Chris is going to be a doctor. Planning isn't going to make him a doctor, Mrs. Harper. It's going to take years of education and training. And rather expensive ones. I realize all of that. But we'll manage somehow. If courage could do the trick, I know you would. But unfortunately, these things can only be bought by cold, hard cash. And if managing means uh, compromise for the boy or mediocre training, then he'd better forget medicine as a career and stay in the grocery store. It'll save him a lot of heartaches. Save him heartaches? Why, being a doctor is all Chris lives for. Yeah, don't fool him, Betty. You make a swell nurse. Will you hire me when you start practicing? Sure, if you're not too old. <laughs> Your grandfather stands ready to... Gee, the farm must have company. Every hey, wait a minute. Mrs. Harper. Johns Hopkins postgraduate courses under the best men in the country, an unlimited supply of money to carry on research and experiment in whatever field the boy finally selects. And what does his grandfather want for all this? An agreement from you giving him complete custody and guardianship of the boy until he's of age. What you really mean is for me to step out of Chris's life completely in exchange for his career? I'm afraid that's it. He's waited a great many years to even up an old score. But I guess it's up to me to pay up. I suppose you have the agreement with you, Mr. Baker? Oh, yes, yes, of course, but don't you think you'd better sleep on this before you uh, make any decision? There's only one decision. So why wait? Mom, you can't do a thing like this. Chris. I heard you. I've been in there listening. And I don't want any part of my grandfather or anything he has. Chris, you mustn't talk like that. But it's my life. Haven't I got anything to say about what's done with it? Legally, no. Until you're of age, Chris, you must live up to whatever agreement your mother makes. Well, there's one agreement she'll never make. Please, Chris. You must listen. You don't seem to realize what this means to you. Look, Mom, if it takes that kind of a deal for me to be a doctor, then I'll never be one. Do you think it didn't mean anything to me that way? Why, why I'd be happier digging ditches. We can't work this thing out together, Mom. We just forget all about it. You don't know what you're saying. Yes, he does, Mrs. Harper. And you accept his decision. It's right, 100% even if it does make my client a heavy loser. 
Stick to your guns, boy. You can't miss. Mrs. Harper, I want you to know that I wasn't very happy in my work tonight. And I'm going to report the outcome to a certain old gentleman with a great deal of satisfaction. <laughs> I guess I'm not a very good attorney. Uh, a bit unusual, I'll admit. <laughs> good night, Mr. Baker. Good night. Good night, Mr. Baker, and thanks a lot. Good night, Chris. Gee, he's a nice fellow, isn't he? Yes. But I know a nicer one. Sure, Doc. I mean you, Chris Harper, and you know it. I, I wonder if you realize how proud I am of you. Oh, gosh, Mom. I didn't do anything. Gee, I forgot all about Betty in the kitchen. Hey, Betty! I wish you could have seen him. He was terrific. Yeah. I'll bet Julie was mighty proud of him, too. What a spot for that cold-blooded old codger to put her on. <laughs> you know, she'd have gone through with that, too. And how? Well, she would have had that son in another minute if Chris hadn't stopped her. You know, Betty, if those two folks don't get the happiness they deserve out of life, there's something wrong with the scheme of things. Well, why don't you do something about it? I only wish I could. It's a wonder to me that you don't get run over. On the contrary, Miss Hopper, I painted a picture that would have cost you a fortune to duplicate. They're simply not interested. In fact, your grandson went so far as to express a preference for digging ditches. So he'd rather dig ditches, would he? Well, that's what he'll end up doing, too. We don't get him away from that woman's touches. Mother. A fine mother, trying to rob her own son and ruin his life. Same as she did to his father. But she's not going to get away with it this time. I want custody of that boy, Baker. Do you understand? I don't care how you get it or what it costs. Then save your money, Mr. Harper, because you've run into something that money won't buy. Your grandson's not going to sell out any more than your son did. And you'd better get yourself another lawyer, because I'm through. You'll be through when I tell you through, not before. Now you stay there and get that settled if you have to stay all summer. Why, I... Taxi lady. Why, Mr. Baker. Present. And hoping to give you a lift. Oh, thanks very much. I didn't expect to see you still in our midst. Well, last night I got my orders from Grandpa to stick around. If he wants to pay for my vacation, it's okay by me. And Oakdale seems like a fine place to rest. <laughs> it is indeed. Here, even our sidewalks go in at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Where to, lady? Oh, please. Right. I'll probably be a little late for office hours. Do you know who just drove by? That lawyer, Baker. Well, that's okay by me. Oh, is it? Julie Harper was with him. They were so busy talking, she didn't even see me. Oh, well, it's probably just some further development of last night's business. That's what I'm afraid of. And just what do you mean by that insinuation, miss? That you're going to be late for more than office hours if you don't wake up pretty soon. <sighs> Why?
poor Doc. Hey, Chris, wait a minute. Where's the fire? Don't be funny. We got a problem on our hands. Oh, come. What sort of a problem? A tall, dark one with a mustache. And we got to do something about it. Do something about a mustache? What are you talking about? That lawyer Baker. What do you think? What about him? I think he's a pretty good egg. Do you want him for a stepfather? Say, do you feel all right? Certainly I feel all right. Well, never mind about him. Then we'll probably never even see him again. That's what you think. Your mother's been out riding with him all this morning, and he's at your house right now. Say, you don't suppose Grandfather's trying to start something with Mother, do you? I do not, but I'm darn sure Mr. Baker is, and it's not business. Come on, let's drive by there and see what goes on. Oh, nothing doing. I got a job to attend to. Is it more important than your mother and Doc? All right, get in. Well, another fisherman in all miss. <laughs> Isaac Walton, Jr., in person. By any chance, does this mean that uh, trout lurk in the vicinity? Oh, well, not only lurk, but bite. Mm -hmm. And with very little encouragement. That is, according to Chris and Dr. Elliot. <laughs> now I know I picked the right spot for a vacation. And if that is real homemade chocolate cake, well, I shall uh, probably move my practice to Oakdale. Well, probably you better taste it first before you make any rash decisions. Mm hmm. Lady, if you knew how many years it's been since I've tasted anything like that. Mm. <laughs> I'm afraid the table in our mansion house has made you easy to please. And I'm afraid that this is going to make the mansion house unbearable. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you, um, you wouldn't consider an idle rumor for a few days, would you? Well, it, this may be arranged. Still here. I don't trust lawyers. I don't think he's like that. Not after the way he acted last night. Acted is right. Why is he still hanging around if everything was settled? Well, you can't tell. Maybe he has to get a statement or something from Mom to take back to Grandfather. How two people can be as dense about some things as you and Doc are, gets me. Say, just because we don't go around imagining a lot of stuff. Huh. I didn't imagine the way they were enjoying themselves when they drove by me a while ago. Why, he's been in there long enough to get 20 statements, if that's all he wanted. Well, so what? I still don't see anything to get excited about. Okay, go on and deliver your groceries. I guess if anything's going to be done, I'll have to do it myself. Betty, wait. Betty, wait. What are you going to do? Well, somebody's got to protect Doc's interest. Okay, but you're going to feel awful silly when you find out you've dreamt this whole thing up. Thought I heard you, youngster. Don't tell me it's... Lunchtime already. Oh, uh, no, Mom. I had to come by this way. Uh, you see, Betty wanted to see the puppies. Oh, they're darling, Betty. Come on, I'll show them to you. No, wait a minute. Um, Mr. Baker, can't Chris pick up your luggage at the hotel and save you the bother? Well, that'd be fine. I'll phone them to have it ready. You don't mind, do you, Chris? Well, no, sir. Of course not. Uh, Mr. Baker's decided to stay in Oakdale a few days and try the fishing. Yes, your, your mother's been kind enough to offer to take me in. You don't mind a border, do you, Chris? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. You haven't met Mr. Baker. This is Dr. Elliot's daughter, Betty. A pleasure, Miss Betty. How do you do? Come on, let's go. Goodbye, Mrs. Harper. Goodbye. See you later. Thanks a lot, Chris. <laughs> Hope you won't mind a border, Chris. So I go around imagining things, do I? Gee, Betty, how was I to know? Oh, perhaps you'll believe me after this. So Mr. Baker wants to try the fishing, does he? I'll say he does. Poor Doc. I gotta try and figure something out. Well, come on and get started and drop me home. And you go get the luggage. Doc, are you ready? Doc, you can't go looking like that. Don't worry, chicken. I won't. Nothing short of dynamite's going to get me out of this house tonight. You mean you're not going over to Harper's with me? I'm going nowhere with nobody till I take me to bed. Your old doc's had a tough day, honey. 
Oh, but you promised to show Chris how to give those distemper shots. You tell him that my dogs are a lot worse off than his. He'll have to wait till Sunday. I bet you would forget you were tired once you got over there. Mm, I'd forget everything because I'd be sound asleep in Julie's best chair and probably snoring. In fact, you're keeping me awake right now. Yeah, but not long enough to do any good. Mm. I don't know why I don't give you up as a bad job. <laughs> Hey, Betty! Gracious, what are you doing here? So I can let Mom know you're coming in time to get ready. Where's Doc? No. Sitting in the house in his bedroom slippers, too tired to move, he says. Gosh, that'll spoil everything. What are we gonna do? Drown Baker. He's the reason for it. Just let Joe Doak's little Minnie get a tummy ache and see how tired Doc is. Think I got something there. Come on! Hello? Oh, hello, Julie. So sorry to disturb you, David, but what's good for a headache? I seem to be acquiring an awful one. Oh, oh, that's too bad. Is it in the temples or further back, Julie? Well, it's, it's not so much a sense of pain as a, as a pressure. Well, well, you take it easy. I'll be right over. Gee, I sure believe it, Mom. Oh, you bet he will. Here he comes now. What'd I tell you? Here he comes, here he comes. Chris, you get here. I'll stand here. I'll be the reception committee. Oh, hello, Baker. What's the matter with the lights? Oh, just a little private blackout. Fuse, I guess. Oh. Come in, Doc. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, Dr. Elliot Ray. <laughs> well, this sort of knocks the wind out of a fellow's sails. I didn't know it was my birthday. You would. Here, give me that old bag. Well, Come on, blow out the candles. Cut your cake. Well, well, this really is something. Oh, so Julie had a headache, huh? Mm -hmm. And you were it, Dr. Elliot. Mm. Come on, Doc, take a deep breath and blow. All right, here goes. You're not supposed to blow the icing off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my own strength. How about a little light, Baker, so we can see to operate here? Right, Doc. And don't be stingy. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't like to boast, but I claim that I do the best cake dissection ever seen with the human eye. A technique developed through years of gastronomic experience. <laughs> Wait a minute. Make a wish. Oh, do I have to do that, too? Oh, of course. That's part of the technique. Then tonight, you put a piece of cake under your pillow, and the wish comes true. You only do that with wedding cake. Well, a slice goes under my pillow just the same. Get the plates, Julie. I'm curious about those three candles, Mrs. Harper. Have they any special uh, significance? Well, I'm certainly glad someone was interested enough to notice them. Well, now, don't let her kid you, Baker. She's either forgotten my age or else she's just being diplomatic about it. <laughs> Nothing of the sort. Well, see, Mom, what do they mean? Something like faith, hope, and charity? No, that isn't what I meant by them. But it certainly fits Dr. Elliot very well. Just the compliments of the season. <laughs> I know. The three little monkeys. See nothing, do nothing, and hear nothing. Now, that'd be a fine slogan for a doctor, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, let's all think. What comes in threes? Musketeers and blind mice, too. Yes, that's right. And wise men and little pigs. <laughs> and triplets. Lassie just had them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that about covers the field. All right, so we all give up. Your past, present, and future. But after all this ribbing, I'm sorry I didn't load it with candles. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to go home mad. <laughs> Gee, Ma, I forgot the lemonade. Wait, I'll go with you. Isn't Doc swell tonight? He hasn't let Baker get to first base. Yeah, that's right. Did you catch the look between them a couple of times? Say, your mother got all jittery once. Looks as if everything's gonna work out all right. You bet it is. I can see him walking down the aisle now, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> Doc, come on. You know, Mr. Baker, Chris's grandfather's a very lonely, unhappy old man. You're rather an amazing person. You know, I believe you're sort of sorry for that old duck. I 
Sam. With all his money, he can't buy anything he really wants. And that's why you've got to dig harder on anatomy, Chris. You've got to know the body so well, you can diagnose with your fingers if you have to. I'd like to diagnose Chris with a club. Heavens, child, must that thing bellow out like that? Somebody's got to wake the party up. It's dying. Come on, children. Let's dance. Not a bad idea. The guest of honor must have the first dance with the host. Well, hostess, it looks like you're in for it. But I'll promise to be as light on your feet as possible. But, David, I haven't danced in years. All the better. You won't notice my fumbles. Couldn't have done better myself. Well, after all, the party was given for Doc. And I'm sort of an, an, an intruder, eh? I think maybe you and I'd better have a little talk. Well, it's, it's a little bit noisy in here. Shall we go out on the porch? Hey, I thought you wanted to dance. Well, I'm sitting this one out. You keep the phonograph going. Okay. Come on. Mind if I smoke? No, go ahead. How much longer are you going to stay in Oakdale? Well, uh, that rather depends. That's what I figured. Guess I might as well come out with it. Chris and I have got plans for his mother and Doc. And, well, you're messing them up, Mr. Baker. Oh, I see. Well, uh, these, these plans are... Are Mrs. Harper and the doctor in on them? Well, not exactly. But things were okay until you showed up. Oh, in, in other words, you feel that uh, I'm the villain of the play? Yes. Because if you hadn't shown up, I think Chris and I could have finally gotten them together. Well, uh, if they care for each other, why should my coming interfere? Well, you're pretty stiff competition for a poor country doctor. Especially one who's goofy enough to love somebody all these years and not tell her. Well, that, uh, that gives me an idea. I won't let any more grass grow under my feet. All's fair in love and war, you know. And may the best man win. Why if I got in, Doctor? Just because it's your birthday doesn't give you a monopoly on the hostess, you know. Which is probably a great relief to her. Go ahead. <laughs> Play a waltz next time, will you, Chris? What happened? I told you I didn't trust lawyers. I'll fix him. Hey. Now look what you've done. Gee, I'm awful sorry, Chris. What happened, Betty? Oh, I guess I was just clumsy. Oh, I'll fix that. We'll put on another record. Yeah, there's one. Come on. Oh, well, that's fine. Hiya, Chris. You want to see something? Sure, Pete. Come on, Toto. Get up, Toto. Get up. Now, sit down. Sit down. Get up. Sit up. Sit up, Toto. Come on. Come on, boy. Sit up. <laughs> Say, it's okay. You ought to be able to teach him a lot of tricks. He shakes hands, too. Shake hands, Toto. Shake hands. <laughs> Ain't that key? Yeah. Watch this. Come on. <laughs> For guy's sakes. Say, keep it up. Maybe someday you'll get him a job in the movies. Gee, maybe I can. Well, so long, Chris. So long, Pete. Back there. Did we hit something? I hit a dog back there. He ran out in front of me and I couldn't help it. You better get the dog out of the street, Pete. I'll get that guy. What's the idea? He just hit a dog back there. So what? That's what. Here, stop it! Stop it, I say! Well, he can't take a punch at me. You get in the car. Now, you young ruffian. If you were an old man, I'd make a double. We don't like hit-and-run drivers around here. Just happens you hit a little boy's dog back there. 
Well, that was an unfortunate accident. Here. Give the little boy that. Do you think $20 will make up to him for killing his dog? Well, it'll buy him another one, won't it? If you lost your best friend, could you buy another one? I don't guess you know much about boys or their feelings either. Is, is he going to be all right? Uh, I'm afraid not, Pete. The little fella's hurt pretty bad. You, you mean he's going to die? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But, but his leg is still and he's licking my hand. He was trying to say goodbye, Pete. Don't feel too bad. Here, come on now. No more of that. Why, Toto here, he didn't even whimper. You want to be as good a soldier as he was, don't you? Sure, sure I do. All right, then suppose you run along and get that face washed. What's going to happen to Toto? Oh, don't worry, Pete. I'll take care of him. Stop at that gas station up there. sent down, evidently made a botch of things. So I came down myself. Well, let's get down to business. We have no business, Mr. Harper. I told your lawyer my answer. Rubbish. If you made my offer clear, no one in their right mind could refuse it. Oh, he made it perfectly clear. But I'm not interested. You're not interested? This doesn't concern you. It's the future of my son's boy that's at stake. He's reached the age when he needs the things that I can give him. If you're any kind of a mother, you'll not stand in his way. He doesn't want the things that you can give him. He wants to make his own life. Chris wants to earn the things he gets. Chris. Oh, it's you. Wasn't killing a dog enough? You have to come back here and... No, no, wait, Chris. This is your grandfather. Grandfather? Chris. So you're John's boy. I came here to try and do something for you. I ought to have guessed who you were when you offered to pay for Pete's dead pup. If success and money make people think and feel like you do, then I never want them. Well, it's all very well to be sentimental about stray cats and dogs, but not about anything as important as your future. What I'm offering you will make you a great doctor. You will enjoy a successful practice. Yeah, and that's what your lawyer, Mr. Baker, said. But I'll tell you I can be one without your money and without your help. A really great one. Like our doctor here, who takes care of sick people because they're sick, not because they're rich. Very admirable, I'm sure. If your ambition doesn't go beyond a country village and the handful of yokels, maybe I'm using the wrong tactics. Since you're not interested in your boy's welfare, perhaps if I gave you $5,000... I've stood just about enough. You heard what he said. I think you better go. Well, I don't care if you are my grandfather. You can't say things like that to my mom and get away with it. Wait a minute, Chris. I'll say he can't. I've no idea what you said, which is probably just as well. It evidently calls for an apology, but I doubt if Mrs. Harper would be interested in hearing it. So we won't detain you any longer. Oh. And don't come back and bother my mom anymore, either. And no 
you'll do fine if you just keep away from here. You wait. You'll come crying to me for help someday. Oh, no, he won't. He's got a real man to help him. My father's going to marry his mother, and they won't even need the name of Harper anymore. Ah! Guess that'll hold him. Well, Julie, I guess it's up to us not to disappoint our children. Oh, excuse me. I, well, don't mind me. Go right ahead. It's okay. No, wait a minute, Baker. Don't go. You're just in time to be the first to congratulate us. Mm -hmm. Say, this is great news. I want to wish you both all kinds of luck. Uh, but, uh, Julie, how did you ever get him to pop the question? Oh, I think that should be kept a secret. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if he... Uh, Try to get out of it, we'll sue him for breach of promise. Say, I don't know that I like having a lawyer around. Well, don't give it a moment's thought. I'll go back to the mansion house and ruin my digestion. <laughs> Say, I got in a jam the last time you went swimming here. Well, remind me to worry about that later. One, two, three! Oh. <laughs> I wonder when they're going to get married. Well, we're not going to let them stall after all we've been through. See, I just thought of something. Where are we going to live? With them, of course. Oh, that'll be great. You know, when I get to be a big doctor, I'm going to build the biggest and swellest home in this town. Oh, I bet you are. Yeah, but maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe not. Ooh, maybe a girl wouldn't want to wait that long for a fella. I think maybe she well enough. Oh, gee, Betty, do you? You're swell. Do you really think so, Chris? Oh, I'll say it. And you're pretty, too. <laughs> you're pretty, too. <laughs> <laughs>